a few weeks ago, I found myself reflecting on something my mother said to me when I was younger. She said, you may not have the ability to walk, but you can talk. Remember that. You see, I was born with cerebral palsy, and because of it, I use a wheelchair. On the day that my mother offered this encouragement to me, it was the kind of nugget that elders offer in passing, in regular old conversation, knowing I'd need it for years to come. Her, way, her words were a way of preparing me for the ways that life and its circumstances would remind me often of what I can't do, but that I needed to remember what I can do. Over the years, I found myself going back to that moment, hearing her words and feeling liberated, liberated to use my words to bring liberation and to experience liberation for myself. So, W-T-F. Those three letters and what they mean seem to come to mind and sometimes roll off my tongue with more regularity these days. Honestly, there was a time in my life where I would have never admitted that, especially as a clergy person. There's this spoken and unspoken expectation for those of us who are ministers to be more put together, more pious than others. We definitely shouldn't use four-letter words that aren't love. I get it. People expect their spiritual leaders and religious educators to have a certain level of control. The work we do is sacred, and I am by no means trying to evade the responsibility of what it means to journey with others through the highs and lows of life. However, sometimes, no matter who you are, all you've got in you at certain moments is WTF. I want to make clear that I am by no means rolling around yelling WTF all willy-nilly. In the Netflix series, The History of Swear Words, host Nicolas Cage says, with swear words, we can cut, soothe, delight, frighten, insult, and seduce. He goes on to say of the F in WTF, it's capable of expressing the full range of human emotions, the pain, the wonder, the unlawful carnal knowledge in a single syllable. Sometimes, try as I might, there are no other words in the English language that convey that visceral sense of bewilderment and overwhelmness like certain words. And it's in those moments that WTF comes rolling out. Now, some may choose not to use certain words or language to express their frustrations or dismay. And I get it. Eloquent articulations come easier to some than others. In any case, what I want to convey more than anything is the collective need for lament. COVID-19 has been one of the greatest WTFs as of late. But so is the presence of ableism, racism, sexism, and so many other isms present in our world today. WTF. 
I mean, really, it's 2021. When will we get beyond the point where we've been and where it feels as though we still are in so many instances? We are individually and collectively lamenting. We are lamenting the loss of loved ones and friends, the loss of work and provision, the loss of community, the loss of a sense of balance, normalcy, if you will, loss. The weight of it all is too tough to bear. And so I am, we are, all screaming in our own ways, W, T, F. I said earlier that the only four letter word it seems that people think ministers should use is love. But unfortunately, the English language and its conventions make this an impossibility. To adequately convey a thought using English, one would need to string together a collection of words that are maybe four letters or more, or perhaps even less. For example, those that comprise WTF are four, three, and four. Now some might critique this message, my message as one that is crass or irreverent. I really am not trying to be. Bell Hooks, in her essay, When I Was a Young Soldier for the Revolution, Coming to Voice, writes, It is important that we speak. What we speak about is even more important. It is our responsibility to collectively and individually distinguish mere speaking and that coming to voice, which is a gesture of resistance, an affirmation of struggle. What if we experienced WTF as a gesture of resistance, an affirmation of our collective struggle? What if we heard it as an invitation to create and hold space for our collective lament at this moment? Space to cry, space to yell, space to pause and to ponder. A space that is absent the policing of language and the angst of respectability. A space open to the lament of our hearts over the last 18 months or so, WTF has become one of my most honest prayers. It is a statement that seeks to make meaning out of what has been both overwhelming and confounding. And I believe if we are to get to a place of collective liberation, we will first need to work through the guttural griminess of our individual and collective WTFs. Friends, it is my hope that we will experience the kind of liberation that frees us to lament those things that weigh heavy on us with whatever words we choose. May we be reminded that we are held together by a word that is only four letters long, but it's wide enough to hold all of us love.